So we're going to do some complex analysis and in particular we're going to find the residues of this complicated looking function here. 4 times the exponential function raised to the 3z and z times z to the 4 minus 1. Now z is of the form a plus bi where i is square root of minus 1 and a and b are integers. So a and b are integers. Okay, now how are we going to find the residues of this? This looks pretty complicated. Well, the first thing to do is to find out when we've got a case when there's a zero on the bottom. So we need to find out when it's not analytic. So z times z to the 4 minus 1. Now the first thing we need to do really is to check if we can factor out all the terms. So we don't want z to the 4 really in our denominator. We want to break it in the form of z minus some number. So z minus alpha. We want everything in this kind of format if we can. So z to the 4 minus 1, that's not doing it for us. So what we need to do is factor that out first. So let's have a look at that. So z to the 4 minus 1. Now, as it's raised to the power of 4, and we're dealing in complex analysis, this has four solutions. So let's break it down. Now we've got a difference of two squares here. So we can write this as z to the 4 minus 1 squared. So now that can now be rewritten as z squared plus 1, z squared minus 1. That will get us back to this format. Now we've got a difference of two squares here again. So I can write that as z squared minus 1 squared. But here I've got plus 1. So that's not really helping me. But as we're in complex analysis, instead of putting a 1 there, I could put an i. So this will then break down to z plus i, z minus i. So that will be this bit. And this bit we all know is z minus 1, z plus 1. So z minus 1, z plus 1. OK, so now we can rewrite our function. f of z, that equals 4e to the 3z over z. And then all of these four terms. So z plus i, z minus i, z plus 1 and z minus 1. OK, so that's quite a big looking fraction, looks quite intimidating. But now we can find the singularities pretty straightforward now, because when any of these bits in brackets and this term here equals 0, this whole denominator will be 0, and hence the function will be non-analytic, hence singularities. That's what we're really looking for. So now we can list them off. So this to be 0 is obviously z equals 0. So I'm going to write my poles here. So I've got z equals 0. For this one to become 0, I need z to be minus i. For this one, z to be positive i. So I'm going to put plus or minus i. And the same here, z is plus or minus 1. So that's my five poles. So there we go, five poles. And the definition of these five poles is they're all simple. So there's no, none of these are raised to a power or anything like that. Otherwise, they'd be of an order of something. But these are just simple poles. So I'm going to write here, simple. So they're all simple poles. Right, OK. So now let's bring this function up to the top and let's start finding our residues one at a time at each of these points. OK, so now we've got our function written up here. So let's start with at z equals 0. So our goal at this part of our question is find the residue at 0. So now what happens here? What we do is we plug in z equals 0 and then take out this term that gives us that particular 0. So basically what we want now is the residue of f at 0 equals the limit 
as z approaches zero of our function. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in zero for all of these terms except for this one and that will give me the value of my residue. So 4e to the 3z. So that will give me 4e to the 3 times 0. Then I don't want this term here, I just want the rest of these terms. So I'm almost just rewriting the function with that particular term missing. So now I've got 0 plus i, 0 minus i, 0 plus 1, and 0 minus 1. OK, let's just break these down inside here. So I've basically just got i times minus i, and I've got 1 times minus 1. So I have to multiply together these two terms here. That would be a nice start. So now I've got minus 1. And then i times i gives me i squared, which is minus 1. But minus 1 times a minus, that's going to give me positive 1. So now I've got 4e to the 3 times 0 divided by minus 1. So that will break down, well, e to the 0 is just 1. So now I've got 4 in my numerator and minus 1 in my denominator. So I'm just going to write that, that as 1 and bring my minus sign up to here. So therefore my residue at 0 is minus 4. And that's how we worked it out at 0. Now let's have a look at the, uh, let's do the, do the real numbers. Let's do plus 1 first. OK, so now let's go for the residue of f at plus 1. So I put a plus sign there so we can really distinguish clearly. With these plus and minus i's and 1's, it's very easy to get these mixed up. So I like to write these down as clear as I possibly can. OK, well, which term is here now going to disappear when z equals 1? Well, that term is now going to disappear. That will become 0. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate my function at z equals 1 for all of these terms. So it's what's called the cover-up method. So we ignore that term there because it's z equals 1, and then that will give me my answer. OK, so now 4e to the 3 times 1. And now plug in a 1 for these z's up to this one. So now I've got 1 times 1 plus i. 1 minus i, 1 plus 1, I'm just going to put straight in there as a 2. And then this one here, obviously that disappears. So now I need to try and simplify this off. So 4e to the 3, that's the numerator, that's pretty straightforward. 1 times 2, that's 2, that's straightforward. Now 1 plus i, 1 minus i. Let's just have a quick look at that. 1 plus i, 1 minus i. Now this one here could be taken as the difference of two squares. So plus and minus in our brackets here. So instead of foiling them all out, I can see that straight away. So now all I do is take the first terms and the last terms, multiply them together, and see what my result is. So 1 times 1, obviously it's 1. Then plus i times minus i. We worked that out previously. That was positive 1. So I've now got 1 plus 1. Obviously that's 2. So now I've got 4e to the 3 divided by 2 times these two terms, which will give me a, another 2. So that then gives me 4e to the 3 over 4. These 4s are going to cancel out. So that means my residue at positive 1 is e to the 3. OK, now let's have a look at minus i. OK, residue at f comma minus 1. OK, so now which term is going to disappear when z is minus 1? Well, this one will be the 0. So I'm now going to cover this one up and calculate my function with all the other terms. So then this will equal 4 times e to the 3 times my minus 1, because that's what I need for my z. 
and then here in my denominator my z is minus one and then i've got minus one plus i minus one minus i so straight away we're looking at the difference of two squares here for our calculation that's the term that disappears that's what we're covering up and then minus one minus one okay right let's simplify this off so 4e to the minus 3 that's the numerator pretty straightforward and now minus 1 times minus 2 that's my real values that will give me positive 2 so minus 1 times minus 1 sorry minus 1 plus minus 1 is minus 2 minus 2 times minus 1 that gives me a positive 2 and then what about this one again? Let's have a look at that one. Minus one plus i, minus one minus i. So again, difference of two squares when it's been factored. So minus one times minus one gives me positive one. And i times minus i, i squared is minus one. So with a minus in there, we're gonna to have to add on one. So that's gonna give us two. So same again, very similar looking. 4 times e to the minus 3 over 4. So that's 4e to the minus 3 over 4. The 4s will cancel out, which will give me e to the minus 3. So I could write that as 1 over e to the 3. So I think I'm going to write it in a, as a fraction like this one. So 1 over e to the 3. Okay, right. Let's have a look at the complex values now. Let's have a look at positive i first. Okay, now residue of f at positive i. Let's go for that one. Now, which term is going to disappear at positive i? Well, that's our term there that's going to disappear. So let's cover that one up and then calculate the function for positive i at all the other terms. Okay. So now we've got 4e to the 3 times i. That takes care of that numerator. And then our denominator. Plug in a positive i for all our z's. So now we've got i. i plus i. That takes care of that. This one disappears. Ignore that. Then we've got i plus 1. And i minus 1. Right, okay, now what we can do here. So here we've got i and 2i. So let's just simplify that a little bit more. 4e to the 3i. i times 2i. Okay, that's going to give us a number of, sh uh, a real number. Then i plus 1, i minus 1. Again, we're looking at the difference of two squares. So i times i, that's going to give me i squared. So that's going to be minus 1. And then 1 times minus 1, that's also minus 1. So minus 1, minus 1. These two terms give me minus 2. So I multiply that by minus 2. OK, let's simplify that off. So now I've got 4e to the 3i. Now this is not to be confused with our position on the coordinates with e to the 3 pi i, this is just e to the 3 i. So this has a complex value. And then our denominator, i times 2 i, well that's just going to give me minus 2 because i squared is my minus 1. Minus 1 times 2 is minus 2. So minus 2 times minus 2, that's going to give me positive 4. Okay, so 4 divided by 4 can cancel. So that equals e to the 3i, and that's as close as I can get with that particular value. So that equals e to the 3i. Okay, so now on to the last one, the negative value of i. Let's do that next. Okay, so the residue of f at minus i. Let's see what we get for that one. So again, which term is going to cover up at minus i? Well, it's this term this time. This is our last term here. Minus i plus i becomes zero. 
So now I'll cover that up and calculate the value of the function of all of these terms here. So now I've got 4e to the 3 times minus i. That's our numerator. And then we've got minus i here for our z. This one disappears. Minus i, minus i. Let's go straight in there with a minus 2i. And then here, minus i plus 1. Uh, minus i minus 1. Okay. Just be careful to take your time to write in the correct values of all of these. It's very easy to get confused when you're trying to rush. So now simplify it off. 4e to the minus 3i. And then here, minus i times minus 2i. Well, the two minuses we're going to lose, so they will cancel out i times i is minus 1, and then times that by 2, we're left with minus 2. And then this one again, difference of two squares, so i times i is minus 1, and then the two minuses, we'll leave that at minus 1. And then here, plus 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. So that would also be minus 2. So now we're going to be left again in our denominator with a positive 4. So that equals 4e to the minus 3i over 4. These cancel out. Now e to the minus 3i. So we, as we did before, we could turn that as a fraction. So 1 over 3i. That's our solution for our residue at minus 1. So 1 over... Sorry, that's e. Don't forget to write that e. e to the 3i. Okay, so that is all of my residues, all five of them, for this complicated looking function here, 4e to the 3z, with z times z to the 4 minus 1 in the denominator. Okay.